Hi, I'm Red Snapper. And I'm Mr. Snapper. And welcome to Project, Project Nutmeg. Nutmeg! Yay! Oh, you! Oh my goodness. We shopped at the Aloha Stadium swap meet when we were in Oahu last year. Plug for the Aloha Stadium swap meet. We were on the hunt for matching outfits for the three of us, since Coca hates wearing clothes. She's a natural nudist. We couldn't find anything with matching fabric that included a dog dress. <laughs> we're tourists. Obviously, we have to get matching outfits. It's, it's mandatory. But we couldn't find one with a dog dress. It's very bougie. Yeah. That's when I got the insane idea to buy a baby dress and convert it into a dog dress. <laughs> She's laying down. Dog dresses by themselves. You can buy dog dresses in the sort of Aloha shirt fabric. The dog dresses by themselves were like 30 bucks a piece. But baby clothes were less expensive. Less, ex less expensive anyway. We got a dress and a diaper cover in 18 months size to fit our 17 pound nutmeg. There were no dresses made of the same fabric, even at $30. There were right. no dog Couldn't dresses the same... in the same fabric as we could find a dress and shirt. And we like the matchy matchy, obviously. And we like the bright colors. So we just had to do a dress for her. Now, before I show you my process, I feel like it's important to note that this is not functional fashion. I usually make harness dresses for nutmeg so I can put a leash on her without adding another layer. I don't have to put a harness on top of her. This, she would have to wear a harness. Now, it does look a little bit like a muumuu on her, but it doesn't have any kind of harness attachment. It's just a cute little dress. So this is just something cute and matchy-matchy, not something you'd want to rely on for walking your dog in a secure harness. Although, since it's very elasticy, you could probably put a harness underneath it. Potentially, and then cut a little hole and do like a buttonhole yeah, around it. Could probably do something. Could. My first step was doing a fitting to see what I was working on and how it looked on her body. I've made enough of the harness dresses in the past six months or year that I have a pretty good idea about how this conversion should fit. When it was time to work with the baby dress, I folded the front to find the center front and then I pressed that line with my finger a few times. I traced that line that I had pressed to mark the center front so that all of the alterations would be as symmetrical as possible. Nutmeg is still pretty petite, plus petit, plus petit. as the French would say. So it was smart to mark it four inches below the neckline where it crossed that center front marking. I know you didn't worry about adding a seam allowance. It didn't really need a seam allowance. I mean, since I was basically scooping out the lower front part of the dress, I established these markings along the way to guide my tapering. So that was four inches center front. And then I measured five inches below the outer edge of the sleeves. So it was like here, five inches below that. And then I made little markings. And then I took a French curve which you could use any kind of curved thing that's the right sort of shape. So I could curve up from the side seams of the dress to those taper markings and then up to the center. So the side seams where the ruffle was attached so I didn't count the ruffle in that. And then I went up to here from the ruffle on up to center front. So here's a little bit of video. Here's the side seam. And here you can see where I made the marking that goes up. And it, see, it, it's pretty low here. So I could take that up if I needed to, but I may just take it and adjust it, cut it, stitch it, and then adjust it as needed. There's Nutmeg's face. She's stepping on the front of the dress, which is the whole reason this dress needs to be taken. In. Now here you can see where I put center front, which is four inches down from the top. 
I'm going to lose some of this to a hem. Then it goes back down the other side. So I think this is good. It will be out of her sanitary area. This is not a dress that she can wear out into the world to securely get along. It's not a harness dress. It's all very, very stretchy. And I may wind up adding a little snap here to the front for bulk, just to help make it fit a little better in the front so that she doesn't trip over anything. We should mention as well that you used a chalk marker. You want to be able to remove the markings if you do a fitting and you and need to readjust mm -hmm. uh, before cutting. You can't add fabric back and have it work the same way. You're not Michael Scott fashioning pants out of your <laughs> shorts. And then refashioning your shorts into pants. Yeah. I smoothed out the wonky lines and then I did one more fitting before I cut the dress. So I put it on her and then I looked at where the lines sat. When I cut the dress, I curved around the ruffle so that it didn't have a hard flat edge. That wouldn't look as ruffly and cute. Right. So, yeah. Oh yeah. I know my way around a sewing machine, but I probably would have pinned the hell out of, <laughs> and pinned the hell out of it and uh, pressed it before stitching. I might have even done it by hand because I don't do the same kind of work, delicate work that you do. Yeah. I used the rolled hem foot on this. I was really careful around the bulky areas, managing those as best I could to keep the bulk from getting stuck in that tiny little rolled hem foot. I know the front wasn't initially styled to have a fitted bodice, so it was a little bulky and dangly after you hemmed it. I guess you could get fancy and slash it to add a button or put darts in the bodice to take out some of that fabric. For sure, I could. Slash it, turn it into something like a sleeve, mm, mm -hmm. or put darts in order to take out some of the bulk. But I opted to add squeezy snaps at the bottom of the bodice area for ease. I wanted it to be simple. Mm -hmm. I measured out to see how much I could take out, how much fabric I could remove from the front, which was about six inches. So I marked three inches on each side of the center front where I had marked it. And then I flipped it over. I added some fusible interfacing to support the fabric that would hold those snaps. I love those snaps. Um, I helped with the snaps because they require a strong squeeze and that's just one of the many, many things I do around here. <laughs> squeeze! <laughs> I, I do love those little plastic snaps, like I said, um, because they're very colorful and you can try to match the print or choose nice accent colors. Uh, we've linked to the ones that we used for this garment in the show description below. And it's the same snaps that you're using for pretty much all her harness dresses that don't have Velcro. Absolutely. And I avoid the Velcro now as much as possible because I don't want it it's to snag. snag. Yeah. And it's a pain to sew and it's really easy to work with the snaps. Snaps are super easy. For sure. The work on this dress was pretty easy and I can't believe it took me nine months <laughs> from our trip to get to this point and get the dress done. It took nine months for it to gestate. gestate. <laughs> yes. Pregnant. Pregnant with the idea. If you try this kind of modification to a baby dress, just remember to measure, mark, and verify everything before you cut anything. Measure twice and cut once. Yes. If you do try Red's baby dress hack for a dog dress, let us know in the comments and ask any questions along the way. If you like how you're trying to figure this out, how did this work? Ask those questions. Red would be happy to let you know how she did it and answer any questions you have. Absolutely. And if you enjoyed this DIY video, please let us know with a like. We've been making videos for about a year now on this channel yeah. and we're beginning to really figure out what people like and what they want to see from us here on YouTube. Right, we're in this for the long haul. So let us know what you like to see, what kind of content you want, and that's what we're here for. Yeah. Subscribe, boop the bell for notifications, and of course, see us next time. Bye. Bye.